All right, so hope maybe can everybody see this design? So I'm gonna just move in a little closer to it here and let Peter explain a little bit about how you did the letters here. These are UK with, this is the Union Jack, right? That's is that what it's called? Union Jack, yep. Yep, and so, so how, can you briefly explain yep, how you did yep. that little part? As, as simply as I can. Um, I used a, a Union Jack as the background. Mm -hmm. I brought in a font uh, I used a font, sorry, me. I, I'm not sure which font it was, I can't remember at the moment. But it's obviously just a simple one. I took away the fill of the font and I made it an outline to it. So that outline, then I, I just need to cut a line in it somewhere. And if I just move that, that to sh say the letter U, just outside of the UK, just slightly outside of it, and I select all, and then I use the knife tool. What that does, it, it allows you to delete anything outside of the, the letter. So you're left with the, the Union Jack inside the letter. Okay. But you've just got to get the letter just slightly outside of the, the Union Jack flag. And it happens, you can work it with anything, but anyway. Um, but then what I did, one thing I did before, sorry, I used um, a satin outline so I, I used my satin line outline to bring it back onto the letter U, because I always like to give my 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 work a nice a nice, nice a nice finish. I think we have a video um, in our files from Costa on how to put things inside mm -hmm. letters too. So if you, the, you can the, refer to that. And this part over here, the rest of the word R A N E, which makes up the word Ukraine. Um, I just put a straight line, drew a straight line through the the, the letters selected the, the last last five letters with the line and s chose knife tool to cut the line straight through so that way I could color the top and, and the bottom separately and obviously flip them so that it makes a bit of a contrast with the design and then finally what you have to do is do all the re full resequence to make sure that everything's okay and if you want to do any um, stitch flows um, maybe if it's, uh, you shouldn't have, I don't think I needed to do any node adjustments anyway so it's quite it does look like a pretty straightforward design mm -hmm. and you know we we showed people how to use that knife tool this is one of my favorite things with the using the knife tool you know I have this you know cutesy one yours is beautiful I, I love that but I have to say I think the knife tool is one of yeah, my favorite yeah, I, tools. I, I, I use that totally, tool a lot, completely, and I've yeah. showed it a lot. So if yeah. you're interested in you know, using the knife tool, if you don't know how to use the knife tool, um, we do have some videos, yeah. and I can always show you how to use that yeah, as I, well. I can recommend the knife tool. I think it's one of the best things in the program. It really is. It does a fantastic job. It does. I always like to say I'm an embroiderer, and I like to cut, mm -hmm. you know. And okay, what else? Can, oh, someone asked about um, Peter. Just post Peter posts his designs, um, pictures of our designs to our page. Sometimes he shares mm -hmm. them um, to our our page, and sometimes he doesn't. The Ukraine one, um, we're just going we're just showing you that, you that here. And um, I, it might we, we, we I don't know if it'll be available at another time, but um, we just wanted I wanted to show everybody that because I thought it was really a wonderful design, a great idea. Many of us can put that into purpose with yeah. other things too. We but don't no, have not, no, no, no wanting to be too different. I didn't want to be political, and I didn't want to be over political. I didn't want anybody to feel that I pushed by putting that design on Facebook. I could have posted it. I was nearly going to ask Anne and decided against it and I thought I'll just show first and then see what they do. Yeah. But you could create your own design if you wish to, something similar. Um, but I, I have a, a little picture of that in my uh, window at home with my little You turned it support. into a poster, right? Yeah. You also yeah. turned it into a poster. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really cool idea too with our embroideries. We can actually mm. print them out and use them mm. in other ways too. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's really, really wonderful. All right, so I have some other samples I'm gonna share with everyone. If Does anybody have any questions for Peter before he goes? And I'll hold on for just a moment to see, because there's always a little lag from what we're doing okay. and when it shows up over here. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see, love that little pillow. And I want to, uh, just one other thing is, uh, I know Wanda's still watching perhaps, but um, I, I, I purposely made I let Anne know that I was here, and I asked her if it could make it a little bit of a surprise for Wanda as well. So, 
I hope it was a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah, so that I know yesterday I was like bursting. I almost mentioned it, and then I was like, no, no, I'm going to keep it all a secret. And uh, so I, I know Wanda's kind of a special friend with us, yeah, so yeah. That, that's, that's why that is. She's, a, she's our Canadian friend, so I guess we have the three countries uh, mm -hmm. kind of combined here. And uh, she posts some nice things, too. She has some beautiful stuff that she does. All right. Oh, uh, Wanda says, Wanda, you me come to Canada or Peter or both of us? And oh, but yeah, thank you both. Yeah, yeah, so that's the thing. You know, people always ask me, like, Anne, can you come to Canada? Can you come to the UK? Can you come to Australia? Any of those places. Um, I have to be requested by management above me. So if you know somebody who knows somebody, have them request me. They'll have to ask my manager, and then my manager can say yes or no or whatever. So if you want me outside the United States, then that's, that's how you have to ask me, unless I sneak away and go on vacation somewhere. All right. Oh, Wanda wants both of us to come. Okay. Um, oh, oh, Janice was asking, is there a ruffler foot and a circular, circular sewing foot for the 11,000? Yes, there is. That's a 7-millimeter machine, right? Yes. So you would need the 7 millimeter mm -hmm. ruffler foot. And then the circular sewing attachment is based on the cover on your bobbin. So when you look at circular sewing attachments, if you take your cover out, you can match it to uh, there. And also on Junomi.com, we have a list of accessories. So you can put in circular sewing attachment, and it will show you the different ones. Or you can look your machine up and then look up accessories and it'll show what accessories and the product numbers go with that. Okay. Um, let's see. Thank you for sharing your design. That was great. All right. Okay. All right. Let me think. We have anything else to say? The only thing I just thought of what I have tried using uh, recently in the UK for, with the software, I think it is, is the, uh, the wool where it stitches the wool oh, into uh, the couching. couching design. For couching. I have bought some wool at, uh, I've tried different thicknesses of wool and I found one that seems to work. Um, I just need to So you need to get, get your design yeah. together I, and I post bought, it? I bought myself a, a multicolored wool, so it should come out oh, yeah, with a reasonable that. design. So that's, that's one thing I, I plan to try in the future. Um, I like couching. I did a little. I've done a little bit of that, and we, we do have couching designs in our machine too. But I really like that we can create um, ones. I know we can do them with free motion because uh, I, I think we just had a video on that. We're doing these uh, feet uh, competitions on Facebook, so I know somebody did that. But doing it in the machine is so much I, mm -hmm. for me. I'd rather do it in my embroidery machine than yeah, yeah, anywhere else. Yeah, so I'm, I think um, many years ago they used to have a miracle stitcher. That was would feed wool through, and you rubbed. Oh the yeah, the brush out, and then they had the brush yeah, out kit. Yeah, yep, yeah. I do have that little brush from that brush out yeah, kit. Yes. Yeah, I have. I do have that yeah, little one yeah. from a long time ago. I think I I came in at the end of the eleven thousand. Right. That and yeah. then um, I, about six months. I came in in about six or eight months after that. They brought out the twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of between the eleven and the twelve. I have an eleven. And then I started with Janome at that point, and it's been a great ride. I just, I just yeah. love it. I, I just can't imagine I that. I started uh, the software would have been the. Uh, we think we did the scan one with the eight thousand. Oh, yeah, oh, I remember that. I did it with the nine. The scan. Yeah. How many of you had that? The scan and sew PC, yeah. like, yeah. right? Is that what it's called? Scan and sew PC. Yeah, you yeah. had to put your little paper drawing yeah. in there, and then yeah. you had to scan it slowly, yeah. and then you could make make work with it. I did some of those. Yeah. Yep. That progressed to I think it was customizer, mm -hmm. um, personalizer was another one, and then we 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 all got involved with um, more digitizing more stuff. More digitizing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then progress to artistic, where we're at now. And now with artistic, I mean, we can do so many things, not only with embroidery. I was showing Peter some of the other things I did, and you guys may have seen this, but you can use your digital cutter with uh, your uh, artistic digitizer software. So you can do things like this. Um, this is actually a clothing iron-on vinyl and a heat vinyl, so you can use that. And I had another, oh, I had some crystal ones. I think they're buried in my stack of things here. I was trying to be organized, but I'm not very organized over there. But yeah, so there's a lot more you can do with our software. Mm -hmm. And like you said, couching yes. is one of them. Um, we can use our cutters with it. We can turn our, artwork, our 
our designs into artwork and print them out too. The, the good thing about artistic is it takes away all the technical. The technical background is there, but the user doesn't have to worry about the technical in the background. Right, they just do the design and it's all there for you already. I like to think that I, I don't have to think so hard. I can work on my creativity. Yep, yep. And uh, for me, I think that's a, a great mm -hmm. way to go. So think about that when you're using the software. A lot of the stuff that we want to do, a lot of the, the uh, background stuff is being done by the software. It lets us uh, be more creative as we go along. Oh, Pat's saying that she used the scan. And so with, I remember that with right. Pat. I did that with her. Um, someone said they're going to make it a priority to learn AD. They're missing out on so much fun. And yes, definitely. you are, definitely. 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 Peter and I both said we could, like, you know, yeah. not go to work and just do so our do stuff on our, our just, computers. We've just been talking for about the last two hours. I know. <laughs> about, about artistic and everything that it can do. Yeah, and different and different ideas. So my head's, like, bursting with things. So we'll have probably have some new things popping up on the page as we go along. So... All right, let me show you a few other. I don't know if we have how many new people we have out there. And um, I don't know, Peter, do you want to stay while I do is there this? Any, is there any, did, did anybody identify themselves as from the UK? Let's see if we have. Oh, I think we had one person from the up here. We had, uh, I have to go back through and see. Um, Sue's Carney Maris, Maris mm -hmm. is from the UK. Hi, Sue. <laughs> and then we have, oh, Calgary, New Jersey. Uh, Canada, let's see. It, no, uh, I don't no. see any on here. Okay, they haven't they haven't said, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Oh, Janie says her world has changed since I discovered uh, Genomi and AD. I think my world has changed a lot too. I just I just love this, and I think what I'm going to do I'm going to hold up my bigger things, and then um, I don't know if Peter if you've done this. This is that 3D right. uh, lettering. I've done, the nearest to that is I've done the foam, where you put the With foam, foam under in, there. In, inside, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is all thread. I'm going to flip over here just quickly so you guys can see. Oops, close up. That's not what I wanted to do. And let me go here. There we go. So you can see it closer. So this here, this is using, um, when you pick up lettering over in properties, you can do uh, 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D lettering. And what it is, it's a buildup of thread. So I don't know if you can see. I'll try to hold it sideways. If you can see that it's thick. It's hard to, it's hard to show thickness. There it is. So this is, this is without foam. This is a buildup of thread. But you can also do, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's ones you can do with the foam as mm -hmm. well. And, and we've done some knockdown stitches. Have you done knockdown stitches before? I've done, I've, I've tested it out once myself just to make sure that I understand the process. As a, I think you did it very early on in the... In the I, I probably like, did we because we... Um, artistic. People are always asking about it for, mm -hmm. you know, they want to use it for loopy towels. So we did a little bit of knockdown stitches. So this is yep. just one more thing that you can do with your software. Mm -hmm. You can create that. Oh, he, uh, Janice is from Wales. Ah, hello, Janice. Ah. Hi. My my oldest um, oh here's oh oh Suze is from War Warwickshire. Warwickshire, yes. There we go. Hi there. My oldest has um, a good friend in Wales. So this is using I'm gonna bring it in close. This is using our gradient, and um, this is great for you know like blending colors. And how would you use gradient? Do you think? How would you use gradient? Um, me personally, probably in in. Uh, like an art type picture. If I was doing a picture that would have a background, uh, I'd make up like a scene. So the, so the, like back, scene. the back part of yeah, it would yeah. be, so probably, I don't know if we'll be able to, this isn't the good one. Let me get my, my other one here. I always stack these the way Actually, I want I, them. And I think then I, I, did, I go in a different yeah. order. I, did, I always go in a different order. I think I did do a design that was like a scene with the, like a beach almost with the sun. With the sun and the- beach and the, and the sea. And the, the contrasting colors uh, maybe I, I overlapped two different colors oh, a, uh, to blend to make it more like uh, a sunset, yeah, sunrise, uh, sunrise kind of get thing. Get the right colors. So what he's talking about is using it's. I used a gray here. This stuff in the back, this whole shape, I use gradient fill. Down here, I added a little darker to it, and then I have another another one over on here. Same with the mask. I did the mask like that too. So gradient mm -hmm. changes the sort of the density yeah. of yeah. your piece. And you can change the gradient from top to bottom or bottom to top. 
Uh, right, so you have more stitches on the top yeah. or more on the bottom. You can also like curve it too. You can yeah. make it a, put a curve into it. So that's always nice. Mm -hmm. And then, do you do any red work? Um, not really. It's not really. I understand how the red work works, but um, I, one one area I used red work was I think to try and get a, a, a run line. So I could use the run line for doing, you know, when we do the lettering, you mm -hmm. convert lettering. Oh, right. Um, or you can do it through the properties tool anyway, can't you? So, uh, yeah, that's 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 a, that's a good that. idea, though. I hadn't mm -hmm. really thought of using yeah. it with yeah. lettering. Yeah. That's a good, good thing to think about. So you can take your embroidery designs and use the um, red work tab under convert and then you can change them to red work. And then you can uh, do break apart and you can remove parts of it. So if there's pieces you don't like, mm -hmm. um, you can actually fine tune it a little bit more. We yep. were talking about these earlier and I, I probably, yeah. this is a little cut work design. Peter likes to do cut work using the cut work needles. So it would, you can put them in. This is a project from our developer. So it will be in the files or in the guides of um, on the Genome Artistic Digitizer page. And he, when you're doing this, it tells you exactly how to create this. And when you send it to your machine, it tells you which blade angle to put in to cut out the center part of that. So that's pretty cool. I think yep. those are pretty neat. One of the other areas of the software I like is the, um, you've got the fonts that are built into the software, but the fonts that you can download I have. Um, I know you, you can get Wingdings as a font, but which comes with software anyway. I think. Um, but I have one called Famous Logos because um, I'm into my football. There's one called English Football, and it's a letter C could be um, maybe Chelsea Football Club or a branded football club, and it puts the design in the page for you instantly, ready to go. Um, a lot of the, the the fonts that you can download are really really useful and can just create a design instantly as quick as as quick as you type you type the letter a you get a design you get on those designs those are really fun yeah, too there's yeah. some really you yeah. don't have to be the artist both of us were talking about our little secret is we don't know how to draw yeah, anything yeah. so um, you know I always say you don't really need to there's things out there you can use to help you do that kind of stuff so uh, one of the places we've gone to to get fonts I, I like to go to dafont.com is that where you go yep, to it's da.font.com da mm -hmm. and uh, there's lots of fonts there and w th there's the ones that have the little um, icons or dingbats in them they're little designs yep. in place of a letter so they're really fun to you work can with just, you can just type in a word and there may be if you type in a search word say Halloween it'll come up with maybe five or ten different fonts um, that have got Halloween things attached to them uh, oh, fun. So it's really care really good really I think good. we're gonna have to take the rest of the afternoon and just play that's how it's gonna I think that's what we're gonna end up doing here's something you can do also with the cutter I, I you may have oh, seen yes, this I before some, doing some doing some masks and I added the, the crystals to this so this was kind of fun um, this I use the cutting, I cut, cut it out with the cutting blades yeah. and then I added, I send it the crystal thing to my digital cutter and I, I cut out some, that. Uh, about two years ago I made some Halloween masks. One was a, a Frankenstein. Oh yeah, yeah. And one I, think was a I, witch. I think I a borrowed witch. your Frankenstein because yeah. yeah. I love that so yeah. much. Yeah. And um, no, you can cut, Raymond is asking, Raymond is asking, can we cut circles? with cutting needles or only straight lines. No, you can cut circles. Yeah. I didn't bring my circle dress. I did a dress for Institute where I uh, cut out circles up you know, along the neckline of my dress and put net fill. And then I made an overskirt with applique uh, circles because I love polka dots. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, I'm wearing my polka dots today. And um, so yeah, so you, there's four mm -hmm. needles or blades in there with the different angles. Yep. And the software figures it out what, what uh, angle you need to put in and it will put it, you put it in your, in place of your needle, you take your thread out of the way, and it will cut as it goes. And so. all, the, all the, the most recent machines, when you put the cutwork needles in, it turns the sensor off when it sees the cutwork. The, turns the thread, yeah, the thread sensor. Remember when we first started, we would mm. put like cardboard yep, yep. In, the, in where the sensor yep, is? Yep. And uh, those were the fun days, but right? But you can, you can draw any shape. You can draw any shape you want. Um, and as long as you can give it an auto border, change the auto border to uh, cut work, you may have to give it a distance off your, um, you may say like an offset. satin line, an offset, and then just let it go and it'll cut it all out. If you get it too close, what's going to happen is it's going to cut your satin stitch or your stitch 
that you need to be clear of. But it's just trial and error, see what, what it looks like on the software for yourself. Um, you usually need to be about half millimetre away from your design to make sure it's clear, I would say. That's a good, that's a good tip. I yeah. never know how far away to be. I'm always like a mm -hmm. point and click and try it kind of person. So we have someone here asking, will they work with the MC11000? And yes, they will. They'll work with any machine, really. Um, if you have a multi-needle, we have round ones, because multi-needles use the round ones. Um, I'm not sure, like, on the 11,000 how it reads that, yeah, it because it's an older technology. It might say uh, blue ink, green ink, and t that's what color the needle is, the blade is that you put in. That's how it used yeah. to read it. And I'm not so. sure if, well, the, the, the thread sensor on the 11,000, I don't know if it reads... Right, I don't know if there's a, uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. if it reads the thread sensor. Mm -hmm. You may have to use the little cardboard trick, just so where your take-up lever is, you just kind of slide a piece of cardboard right. in there just to block. Mm -hmm. That's where your thread sensor is, so when it says a thread mm -hmm. break, it's because it can't see your thread in there. So that's where that is. Oh, we have Danielle from France. Welcome, welcome. All right. All right. All right, let's see what else we have here. Oh, here, let, we were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite things. This is paint stitch. Have you done... You've done paint stitch, I have did, you? I've done a couple of things. One, 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 one thing I did do was, um, I know you shouldn't do, but it's, if you keep it personal, then it doesn't matter. So I did, <laughs> a, I did a Jack and Sally design from Nightmare Before Christmas. And I put the heart that's in uh, the, is it Wingdings font? Oh, yeah. The mm -hmm. heart that's in there that it seems everybody uses. I put that around them. Um, and at the moment, you have to save the paint stitch as a Jeff file. To, to delete the properties from the file. Bring it back open, put the heart around it, and you can cut away the outside excess that you don't want. And you're just left with Jack and Sally inside the heart. So I always say, you know, there, there might be things in our software that you think you can't, mm -hmm. you can't, uh, uh, you know, work outside the box. So that's, when you're working with paint stitch and you want to make it a shape, that's where you would save it as a Jeff bring it back in and then you can lay your line on top of it and use your knife feature to cut it away yeah. and then you can yeah. make that that beautiful heart shape. The, the other thing I like about the software I like doing is uh, applique. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh I don't know. It just I'm... saves a lot of time. Um, I did do a larger design which involved many years ago you know me used to produce their own memory cards so this this uh, involved a, a, a rose bouquet that's all it was, a rose bouquet. So I, in artistic, created a vase for this rose bouquet and I made the vase applique, but once it had appliqued, I put the array fill into it as well so that it could hold, oh, okay. hold the material. Hold, hold the material. I, I didn't bring a lot of my applique. I only have one little one and I'll hold it up close so you can see. It's this little butterfly. So that's what he's talking about, is applique. So you can easily design applique right here in the software. Hopefully I have it in mm. front of the camera, there we go. And there's, you can use the applique tab or you can manually create your appliques as well. I did a, I did a great Father Christmas as well uh, with his beard, with the... Um, oh, a the, Santa? With yeah, with the, the right material for his beard. Oh, uh, like a the whole thing. Like a fur? Yeah, yeah, the Ooh, whole thing. Ooh, really I like good. that. I have, to, I have to get my samples, I dropped them on the floor. <laughs> so, you know, these things happen usually at my house, I have an assistant that sits over on the other side of the wall, and I can usually say something like, hey, I wonder if my assistant's free, and he'll come over and get things for me. So this is kind of what um, Peter talked about earlier with putting the Union Jack in the letters. I did this with uh, polka dots. So you can do a lot of things with filling up letters and things like that. Here's another one. This is um, where I used, I changed the density to make it... Uh, what I call sketchy cat. So you, it's a light stitched piece. So if you like that light stitched piece, you can work with the density tab in your properties. I think it's a good way too to learn. For me, it was helpful to learn a little bit about density yeah. and how, how it looks and how it, how it can really change your, your pieces. And this um, little design, I think it came from a, a, like a clip art that was in like Word or um, one of those other places like that. And he was connected in the center between his two ears. And I just used what feature? The knife to cut that apart and have two different pieces so I could work with them individually on there. Um, 
Did you do anything with buttonholes? Have you ever done buttonholes? Um, I created a design. I, Did, not I really as much, but I, I created a design that was like a heart shape, and I put buttonholes into it so that I could... I also used the cutwork needles to cut the heart shape out, and then you can position the buttonholes on your T-shirt or whatever, oh, and you can put it, it on. So you could always change it if you wanted you could have, a different you could have design. Different, you could have different designs. Oh, I like that idea. So I did, I did these on here. The, there's, you can do buttonholes in the software, and then I added a little graphic to the side of it. Well, actually, I drew that little oval. It's a shape. So these are little buttonholes. There's different shapes of them, and you know I did them all at once in the hoop. I just laid this in the hoop of my machine, and it did all those buttonholes at once. What an easy way to do it. I didn't yeah. have to fiddle with yeah. that. I love our buttonhole foot and how we do our buttonholes, but this was so much easier to lay that in there and just have it do all of its job by itself. Um, and, I, you know, my favorite thing is in the hoop projects. I just love mm. in the hoop mm. projects. So we've done quite a few of these. And I've just done uh, soft toys, I think, is more, oh, more, more like what I've done. I did some... Um, a long time ago, we did a, a project for, for uh, breast cancer in the UK, and we did it internally, so everybody had to make something. Oh, wow. And I decided I was going to make um, a strawberry, but I, at first it was a heart shape, so that's all it was. And I did the heart shape, and I thought, there's not much to this, it doesn't, uh, nobody's going to want to buy this. So then I decided to put the little heart shape gold seeds onto it. So I put the gold seeds onto it, and then I thought, we, have, we used to have a face card that we did, uh, but you know. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So I used the faces out of the card and put them onto the strawberries. So they all had their own little character. Um, that was oh, quite that's good. cute. That I sounds made, really cute. I made cute. some sort of large ones this big and some small ones. So, so, and we put them into a, a basket as well, so it looked like it was a, a basket of strawberries, a punnet of strawberries. Does anybody recognize this? This is one of the projects from our developer. And um, Costa and his crew, they put together, they create these little projects. This is a key holder. So you can put your keys on here and then you pull the little tabs up here and it keeps them safe under there when they're like in your purse or wherever, in your pocket or whatever. Very cute little thing to do. Um, and of course, we. I'm just the last thing I think I'm gonna show and then we, maybe we'll go to demoing software, if anybody, or unless people want to keep talking. Um, oh, I'll, Patty, I'll get right. Let me get right back to you. Hold on. So this is our uh, the, a bigger of that same project that I gave Peter. This is our big uh, zip pouch of the month. It, oh yeah, right. So that was the, oh right. This is the smaller one from. Uh, February and then in March I added inside pocket along with that slip pocket okay so Patty's question was and about I'm a little confused I thought this was going to be a beginner session on how to use the software and it, and I am going to go to software in just a moment I, I have a machine to and, fix and, and he's got to go learn how to got to go fix a machine but I was just wanted everybody to meet Peter because he does uh, post things to our page and they're great he has great ideas and he does lovely work so I'm always happy to see that yeah, we've, I'm not sure if everybody's aware we've just finished two worksheets um, one was for St. Patrick's Day which has just gone and the other one was the cameo with the and those are on and I'll have to bring them over to mm -hmm. the um, we've not uh, sent them to you yet. oh okay ah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah you have to you have to send me those and you can find that they post them to the um, genomiuk.com, I think it's genomi.uk.com or something like that the, on their site, but they send them to me and I post them to the Genomi Artistic Digitizer Facebook page, so they're easier to find there, all under guides under the worksheet tab. So I think that puts us at like 30 something, 38, 38, I think 38, 38, 38 worksheets. Yeah. So there's a lot to do on our page. Mm -hmm. Nobody should ever get tired of finding things to do or to play with. I think the so. things about those worksheets is it was as I was learning the software, it was helping others learn the software at a similar stage as well. Um, yeah. That so. is great. That is great. Well, I want to thank you for right. th thank for coming and, and reminding them to tell me you were here so I could come uh -huh. up and see you. Since thank I, you I don't, I think we haven't seen each other since maybe like 
2018 or something like like that it's been a long time here here as well it was here it was here yeah Mm -hmm. we saw each other last so so hopefully i'll get traveling around and maybe i can go over there or we'll meet up somewhere else with uh, some company things who knows so thanks for stopping today and i'll let i'll let you pack your bobinage stuff i'm gonna have to let regina knows i want some bobinage i go home on sunday uh saturday Saturday. saturday we go home on saturday i should be back in the uk Sunday morning around about eight o'clock, uh, oh. hopefully, all, all being well. But the weather here is uh, it's very high and very low. I think um, Saturday we arrived, it was really bad weather. Oh yeah, Saturday was not yeah. nice. Yeah. Sunday was absolutely Beautiful. stunning, mm-hmm. and we were lucky because they treated us into a, a ho- to stay in a hotel in central New York. Ooh. So we went to see um, Statue of Liberty. Um, Rockefeller building, we went to the top of the Rockefeller building, uh, went to see Ground Zero, and we went in the Trump Tower. Ah, very nice. What a great little trip. Man, I... They just had me come here to the office. Goodness yeah. gracious. I shouldn't complain. They did send me. I did get to go to Greece, so I, I cannot complain yeah. at all yeah. on that part. But I'm glad you enjoyed your trip, and I'm so glad we could my, meet uh, up. He's got his bobinage bag. stash there yeah. to take back and his little – and, of course, he's got something from, this from is, us. This so. is proof. I have to take this into Genome UK next week, proof that I actually arrived here. See, you'll be having a Same bobinage in there pretty soon. We will, yes. Yeah, yeah. you'll have yeah. to have it. Oh, I'll come open your bobinage when you have it. So that's what you'll do. We'll do a, com- a combined artistic digitizer event at, at the new Bobinage. That'd be so, good. Yeah, nice to meet everybody. All and, right. Um, Thank you, maybe Peter. Maybe again one time. Yeah, we we'll, we'll meet up again. I'm sure we'll see you on Facebook. Okay. All right. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you for your patience, everyone, as we go through. I want to put the software on now so that we can take a look at that. So hold on. I'll switch over here. But wasn't that fun? It's always fun to have a a very special guest. All right. Here we go. Software. All right. Let me go back here. And I got to move my little window. All right. So let me just start over here. So if you're new to the software, your software will open up... um, uh, your software will open up to the welcome page. And I always like to remind people we do have videos that are built in on the right hand side. If you don't see them, there's a, a little triangle right here, very small one, that opens and closes that part of it. And you need to, you, you need to be on the internet to see these, um, but you can always go to YouTube, they're there as well. And then, of course, I keep mentioning the Genomi Artistic Digitizer Facebook page. They, there's videos there. All of our lives are there. There's project videos, all kinds of things going on there. So as a new user, I always like to point out, um, and on my um, screen, you're not going to be able to see this because I'm on a Mac, but um, at the very top, you'll have some words way up here. And, and on the screen, you're going to see my, my mouse not go away there, I guess. I don't think I can, I can't pull that down. You'll see like file, edit, view, window, and help. Under help, I'll click right there, are your help topics and your printable help. So this is the one if you need to, if you want to print out a manual, you can, or if you like to look at a manual that's more in uh, this kind of an order, you can do it there. The other thing is the help that says, um, wait a minute, there. There we go, this help here, help topics. I use this a lot because I like the search tab right here. I can type in whatever I wanna search and it brings it up for me and I can find it really quickly. So they have a contents and an index if you like to work that way. But I do like the, um, the search part of that. So let me put this back full. So that's up there. The other thing is um, you want to change your, um, if you want to change your preferences to uh, inches or to uh, metric, usually it's set, it set at metric, but if you want to change to inches on your um, PC under view, there's a, uh, a tab saying tools, options, and you would go there. On a Mac, you would go up to where it says artistic, and preferences, and you get the same window. This is the window you'll get Mac or PC. And right down here is where you could change from inches to metric. Right now I'm in inches, 
And if I wanted to go to metric, I would click here. If yours is in metric already and you want to go, it should say to, uh, probably imperial is what it's going to say. Just click to imperial and it'll bring you here. You may have to close your software and reopen it to get it all to reset. But there's other things along here too that you can uh, change and customize for your software. But I always like people to work in the uh, measurement that's easiest for them. Now I work in inches, but there are things that I like to input with mil in millimeters, like stitch width, stitch length, because I'm used to that with my sewing machine. So even though I'm in inches and I need to put something in millimeter, I can always put it in as 2.0 mm and it will auto convert it for me in the software. If you're a metric person and I tell you the box needs to be two inches by three inches, you can put in in your toolbox 2.0 in or 3.0 in and it'll convert it to inches and give you the metric of it so you don't have to worry about that part. All right, so down here, these great big boxes, this first column is how you would enter into the software. You can create work from a fresh new page. You can go into your files and look for individual files of designs. Or down here, which is this is my favorite way to go in because I can see everything. And I'm not connected to a machine today, so we won't be able to see that. But you can see everything in your computer. You can see things in a USB stick that's in your computer. You can see if you're connected to your machine by wire, wireless or cable, you, might, you should be able to see what's in your machine. And also, you can, if you have a cloud account, you can see what's on your cloud. So that looks like this. It opens up. Devices are down here. And if I had a sewing machine, it would be showing up right down here. Right now I have this, um, this is my USB stick, no name. And here are the folders in there. And when I open up my folders, and I have one today that's, here we go. When I open it up, ooh, it's empty there. I don't know why. Let's see what's going on with that. Maybe this one has something. There we go. They're in this side. So it opens up and it will give me, um, embroidery designs and um, these are all my graphics but I, I could save embroidery designs here but I get to see every picture which I really like except for this one there's something going on with that PDF so oh, it doesn't read a PDF that's why and um, so you, I like this because I can see um, what I want to work with okay now when I have folders um, let's open up my desktop. So these folders here, let's say one of these folders I would like to use all the time. I can um, right click on it and I can add it to favorites. So over here is my favorites. So I do that a lot. I have things over here um, in my favorites and I just updated my software so I have to add a few more things in there because I move some things around. But I usually have a lot of folders here that have my most used things. It doesn't move them in your computer, it just gives you a link to them right here. All right, the second column, this is really important, these two boxes right here. So here, this is where you would set your default machine and hoop. And I'm, I'm using a Janome, we have other brands that can use the software, so if you're multi-branded in your house, you can use this with other software. And then on here, I can pick the machine I have, and sometimes you have to scroll away to the bottom to find something. We have all the machines, our European models as well. If you don't see your CM17 at the very tippy tippy top, you probably need to update your software, okay? And if you need to help with that, you can always message me. I'll help you with that. So here you pick your machine and your, your hoop. I always, I always keep it at this one, so once it's here, I don't have to change it, and then except when I get to the designing part. And then in here, this is where you would choose, not that, whoops, wait a minute, there we go. Um, this is where you would choose your embroidery category. This sets the basic density uh, of your design, okay, that you're designing. So anywhere from smooth to heavy, I typically stay at normal. 
And then over here, you could pick a fabric background. This just gives you the look of that fabric behind your design. I like to stay in, not, I don't want a fabric background for me when I demo. I like it just clear, like nice and white. And up here, you can change the color of your background up here if you wanted something different like that. So I want to go back to just the white. But you can change and make your background any color you like, however you like to work. And sometimes it's good to change it. I was just working with someone today, and we changed it to a black background because all of the elements were very white. So it looked much better. We could see what's going on by having a black background. So you would pick um, your category and your background color. And then these stay there. These are what's called your defaults. So they would always be there. Next, over here, these are your recents. This is anything you might have worked with before. All right. And um, so from here, I'm going to bring in something. This here is a Jeff file. So it's already an embroidery file. And when you bring in your embroidery files, when you click on them, um, over in your see over here in your properties you'll notice it says raw and for you to do any real editing I can't can't do edit nodes there none of the some of these tools will not work what you need to do is con is convert to curves the pieces that you want to work with so if the center of this let me go back here to select if I wanted to change the center of this flower I could do, I don't have to change the whole design, I only can change, I can change the parts I want. I can convert that to curves, and then all my properties show up. So if I want to change the pattern that's in there, and maybe I want this type of a pattern, I can do that. So if there's things you want to change in your design, now these are connected, so I could probably, uh, I would probably have to delete. I could work with them together if I want to convert them. And then see how they change to these individual ones. Now, everybody says, oh, it ruins my design. Well, probably you pick that area because you want to change something in that design. You want to make it more of your own. So that's why it changes like this. And then you could draw in the parts that you want. Remember right up here, undo is your friend right there. Sometimes when there's a part, like I like these little things going around, but maybe I want them slightly different, I could use my uh, shapes tool and I could create these shapes myself, delete what's there, and have my own part in there as well. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of things you can do. You can resize your design with this as well. So if I wanted it to be maybe a little bit bigger, it recalculates those stitches for me and I have a bigger design. A lot of times that's what people are doing. Or you can add your lettering to this over here. You can click on text. Up here in the text box, you can type in your word. And I'm gonna go back just one, one thing. When you go to um, put in your letters, anywhere you click on the your area, that's where your letters will start. See that little blue line? Typically it's in the center when you start. But I always like to click over uh, outside my area a little bit. And then I'm just going to write. There we go. And oops, I had my caps on. So let's delete back because I don't want it caps. There we go. And now that I have it in there, I have tools here that I can play with. Maybe I want to put it on an arc like that. And then I can move it so that it's going to be over my flowers like this. Move this one down. I can set uh, where I want it on the arc. If I want it um, in the center of my arc, there we go. And then I can click off of it. I can click up here. My letters have outlines. I'm going to zoom in close so you can see. Maybe I don't want outlines. I can select my piece. Down here I can see the outline is selected and the fill, but if I click on the X, it will take the outline away. All right, so you can work with that. Everybody's so quiet. Hopefully, we've still got people here. Let me see what's going on. There we go. All right, so that's working with 
something like that. Let me go back to my browser. Now you can see I have new tabs up here. So here's the browser where I just was. And I can open up my, um, let me see what's in here, demo designs. Nope, that's from something else. Let's go back to my machine designs. There we go. That's not what I wanted. What is wrong with me? I want to go down here. I want to go to my class designs and graphics. There we go. So if I want to use something that's a graphic, um, I have a couple choices. I can bring in a JPEG, uh, which is a bitmap. It is made of little pixels or an SVG. SVG is a vector and there's other types of vector files as well. Um, let's bring this in. This is a JPEG. A lot of people have JPEGs. This is something I uh, grabbed off the internet. I can crop out parts of my design. So I'm going to just make this small. This is the, the ladybug that I used. And here are my choices of what I can do with it. If I want to do paint stitch like that little wallet, I can click here and go OK. And it's going to go right in oops, and turn into paint stitch. There's my paint stitch. Now, I have some controls over here. I can change my palette. Maybe I like to work with Marathon, and it will change it to Marathon Colors. If I wanted to change uh, the number of colors, I think I can go up a little higher, let's see. I can make it 20 colors, which will give me more definition. I can change the smoothing of it, so I could make it uh, high smoothing that sort of blends the colors a little bit more, makes the stitching a little smoother. And then same thing here with blending. I can, I can full blend it and it will add, um, it'll really get those colors to blend. This is thread work. These are all little tiny stitches. I can show you up, up close. These are all tiny little stitches. And what we were talking about earlier was um, if you wanted, you can't edit this. I can't reach, I can't go in here and get this green. It's it doesn't break apart, none of those things. If I wanted to do something fun with this, like cut a heart or maybe take away the dark green or whatever, I would have to save it as a Jeff file and then bring it back in as a Jeff file and then it will become editable for me, okay? I'm just trying to show a few things that I think um, our starting users might do and Patty, if there's something I you want to see specific, please let me know so I can pop it in here. Um, let me see. I want to show this one here. This is another JPEG. These these kind of things sort of um, uh, people send people a little bit uh, have trouble with. Let's auto digitize this. So I want to turn this all into stitches. This is my size down here, so I could change the size there if I want. I'm not going to crop it. I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to such okay. And then my accuracy, accuracy adds the points around here. This is a JPEG, so it's pixelated. If I up it, it'll have a lot more points and it might not be as clean a design. If I go too far down, it might not give me enough definition. So you can play around with that. And what I mean by that is let's turn this on and I'm gonna go in here and zoom, zoom for you. Let's see if I can. There we go. Do you see those little dots? If I go down, they'll go, there'll be less of them. Give it a minute for it to do its thing. So those little dots, okay, these are, um, let's see if I go this way. There we go. Then let's go back up to five. I typically like, five is like the middle for me, and then I'll change my colors over here to two because it's a two color design. Sometimes with black and white, you might have another color, and this is clearly black and white. Sometimes you have a gray in there. So I would definitely add, if you'd see something, a definition in the black, put that color in because, add it in here because you, you'll get a better trace of that design. And let's go here to trace, and it will appear on my screen. So here it is as stitches. Behind it, let me just select all of it here. Behind it is the um, image. So to make the image go away, 
up under view, which is in the very top toolbar, you can do view, backdrop, hidden. And there are shortcut keys for that. I like to move it out of the way because sometimes it, it interferes. Okay. All right, so here I know um, when I have this selected, it's selected everything. So I can't, I don't want to click, I don't want to click here and delete something. It'll delete everything. I'm just going to click on this white and it's selecting the whole, the white on the outside and I can delete it right here. And it left this black. And now I have this inner part and this part. So I can change colors. If I want to change colors, let's make that like a window. So we'll make it a pale sky color. And maybe this needs to be I don't know, let's see. Maybe it's a turquoise there. So we have a very cool looking spaceship. So there it is. Um, I could take these away if I don't want something there. If I delete this, look what happens. It turns all black. So in order to not have that happen, you can select that part and the black part. Whoops, you do shift and the there we go. I got those two parts. And I can see down here I have the black and the light blue. I can right click, shaping, and trim. And what that does, it's, it just like took this piece like a cookie cutter and cut through to the back. So now there's no black there. This is a great tip to know when you're working with lettering, when you convert a word, if not a typed word, but a word that you bring in for somewhere, you convert it off a logo and you have an E or a B where the center of the, the letter is the background color, this is exactly how you would remove it. You select your piece that you want to remove, shift, and then the background color, right click, shaping, and trim. And now I can take this and delete it. So I have that if I wanted it that way. Okay, and we are going to go over. Let me see what time it is here because I know I'm going over. Oh, it's a little over. I'll go through a few more things that I want to show you. I talked about cut work, and um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to go to a new page. And in my shapes, I'm just going to do a little star shape like this. Up here, I can change the rays to five. And there we go. And I can select this, and in my properties over here in um, outline, you'll see cut work. All right, that's different than uh, using a cut file for your cutter. I'll show you that in a minute. So, cut work, when I select here, it automatically gives me the, it's going to set all those lines, but I will have to change like the, um, if I need a running line before I cut, which will hold everything together, the offset, and that's what Peter was saying, how far away you want your offset. Maybe I want my offset, let's move this to this way. There we go. So that line that's, that you can see here, maybe if everybody can see that, that line is going to be my cut line. So it's going to cut out around my piece like that. And then I could fill the inside with a net fill. Right here, I can select net fill. And then I can change the cell size or the angle. Sometimes it's good to change the angle. And I'm going to delete my inside, my color in the inside there. You can see it better. So I can change my cell size. There are videos on our uh, Artistic Digitizer, Genomi Artistic Digitizer Facebook page. Um, I show how to do this uh, in several different places, but if you put in hashtag cut work, you'll find more things there. I could add a satin serial around that design as well, and I could make my, uh, let's see, satin serial, the offset, the density. Yeah, so that I could work with all of that. So there you go with that part of it. So when you send that to your machine, your machine will read these different angles and it will tell you which blade to put in. Okay, or actually these outer angles. All right, so let me show you, let me think about this. If I can show you one more thing, I'm gonna look at my, this here is a SVG and it's a vector. So it's made of lines and curves already. So when I click on it, boom, 
it comes right in and it stitches. Okay, I can use my digitize outline shape tool and I could draw a line that runs like this and then I double click and shape and I'm going to select the line and my piece like Peter was talking about right click there's the knife and then I can come in here let me do this I'm gonna go in close here I'm gonna move these nodes down a little bit so we can see the break. Okay, whoop, that's that one. All right, I'm gonna go back out so you can see this. Here we go. All right, so there's my little safety pin. You know, I could do this kind of thing. This is a little difficult. Let me see if I can do it. If I want to, I can select some of these. Let's see, it's hard to figure out where I got to put my cursor. But I can select some of these and I could move them like that and reshape this. Okay, so working with SVGs is really an easier, if you can find SVGs, but working with your JPEGs, you can definitely work with JPEGs. Um, oh, let's go back to that new, a new page. In the software, there's a lot of things that you can work with. Up on the top toolbar under tools, you have your uh, insert symbol, which is your wingdings and webdings, those fun things to work with, and your clip art library. In here are a bunch of these designs that you select, click and drag them. I love this little B. Click insert and then just click and drag. There's my, oh, well, he goes this way. There's my B. And I can select him and move him towards the center. And this one here, is, it's embroidered a little fun, funky under here. If I don't like that color, um, I can click on here and select ungroup. And then I could take this away. If I don't like that, I could delete it right there. And I could add something different underneath it if I wanted to. Okay. There's a lot of tools you won't see until you um, have the right things on your toolbar or the right things selected. Okay. Um, the other thing that's nice is up under your CM17 or your sewing machine tab up here is center to hoop, which helps. Down in the left side here, you can change your hoop if you want. And when you change your hoop, don't click the plus. That adds a hoop for multi-hooping. If I wanted to go to a smaller hoop, I could check there and maybe I want this one. And I'm like, I'm going to take that hoop, but I'm actually going to make him smaller to fit my hoop now because I just really want him that big. When I'm done, one of the things I do typically when I'm done, I will save my design as a draw file. This is very important. Your first one, or even when I get started, before I put, you know, I might put one little thing on here. I will go up to my file, save as. And I will put it in a folder. I will change the name of it up here to, I'm going to say B, B1. And then I'm going to leave it as a draw file. Draw file is my editable file. So when I want to come back to this to re-edit it, um, I can come back to that. It won't, if I don't, if I save it as a Jeff and I bring it in, it's going to be raw data. And I showed you raw data earlier. So I could save it here. If I want to send it to my machine or my USB stick, all I have to do is click up here. And here are all my choices. If I was cable connected by Wi-Fi, USB, I have a USB, so I'm going to select USB. Um, there's my USB. I'm going to select it. I see my EMBF because my, I'm in my EMB folder. Let me op go up one level. Here's my EMB folder. I have these other folders there too. I could use, I could put it out here, but I, if you like your EMB, so just to know, let's see, just to know when you open and see EMBF, you're inside the EMB. You can put a design outside your EMBF folder if you want, and it'll, when you open it in your machine, do not select EMBF. If you like to use the EMBF, yes, of course, select it and put, some, put it inside the EMBF. 
And then down here, JPX is a Jeff file with a graphic thumbnail. If that makes you nervous, you can always use the Jeff here and you could export it. Let's do that, we'll export. If I wanted to save it now as a Jeff, I would go to File, Save As, same place I went to before, but right down here, I would change it to a Jeff. I don't need to change the name because it's gonna have a different file extension at the end, and then Save. So now I have it as a draw file and a Jeff file saved. I also have sent it to my USB stick. All right. All right, I want to go back to the, I'm going to go back to the camera for just a moment to give my goodbyes and talk about uh, one more thing before we go. All right, here we are. All right, let's see here if I can get this to. There we go. All right, so some I don't know if anybody's watching that's trying our new uh, trying the trial for the month of April. Um, you'll be getting the codes around the first, they start putting them out April 1st, so you'll be getting your codes. When you get them, there's information in there on how to download the software, and please print out all the directions, how to extract it, those directions you need. Once you extract it, there's directions inside how to install. Make sure you have all of that so you can install it easily. Follow those directions. And then you're, you're going to be given two codes. They go into the soft into the uh, startup when you're starting up. They'll have there'll be a place for those, and then um, when you're ready to use your software, you will there'll be an icon on your desktop. You'll be able to double click on that, open your software. Now, if you wanted to put your software on a second computer, you can do that. Um, you have to follow the procedure of closing your software, and then you need to go find the software key on your computer. Usually, it's in your taskbar and it's a little green uh, uh, circle with a key in it. On my Mac, it's on the top toolbar. You'll open that and select Log Out. Then go over to another computer, maybe you install it over there. Uh, when, you, when you go to switch computers, you'll open that software you installed. Before you open that software, because if you try to open it, it'll tell you to get, open your key. You open your key, open or show, select Activate, and then you can launch your software, okay? So, um, so Sally, oh, Sally, very good. I'm thank, thank you for asking this. Sally has Junior already installed, so very easy for you. What you need to do, and I'm gonna go back really quick to show you, uh, I, I think it'll show here. Okay, so if I, um, I'm gonna go open my, my software key I'm going to do show, and it's not going to show in here because I'm already on, but um, what you'll do is log, make sure your software's closed, then click log out right here, and then uh, delete the numbers that are here. Make sure you saved your numbers and your junior numbers, and then click put your numbers in here, and then it'll highlight activate, and you can activate it. So it'll be the full program while you're selected that way. Then near the end of the um, our time, um, you can close the full program and then um, log, open your key and log out and then put your junior codes back in and activate and go back to junior. I go back and forth, I have full and junior, so I go back and forth the same way. I have two computers, I go back and forth, actually I have three, I go back and forth between all three of them in the same way. Opening the software key, logging out, always making sure before you start anything that your software is closed. Okay, all right, and so that's, that's our, um, so I know right now that um, the uh, USA and Canada is having the free trial. I have not heard about the other countries. Um, maybe some whispers, I don't know. So watch for your country or check in with your distributor to find out if they're offering the free trial uh, for the software. And then make sure you go over to our Genomi Artistic Digitizer Facebook page. And it is the one that starts with Genomi. That's the one you wanna go to with the blue banner at the top. That's where all our guide videos are. That's where all our great answers are. Lots of help, and it's a wonderful place to be. So make sure you uh, check on that as well. All right, so, um, yeah, it was, Marty. It was nice to see Peter. I was really excited about that. So thank you, everyone, for joining me today. And um, 
that, thank you. I'm glad you got to meet Peter to kind of put a face uh, to a name when you see it on, on our Facebook page when he posts his um, designs and offers his expertise on digitizing. And, and thank you for um, letting me share some of my samples to inspire you and get moving along with your artistic digitizer. What we're going to do um, the first two weeks of of April, I'm always thinking August, April, um, my lives are going to be Throwback Thursdays. So we're going to pop up some special videos there for you uh, to help you with the software. So be sure to check back. We'll be posting that so you have that information. And as always, all of our videos done on this page are saved here on the Genomi Sewing Machine page. Anything done on our Continental Club page are saved to that page as well. And you know what? When you go there and you see those videos, there's a three little dots to the top right-hand side. If you click on those, you will be able to save that to your uh, area. And last week, I think I showed you how to do that and where to find them. I, I, it was some more time last week. In the last week and a half, two weeks, I did that for you guys. Okay. All right. I'm going to let everybody go. Um, I, I'm going to see if I can get a, you know, maybe we'll go out to dinner with Peter. Hmm, who knows? All right, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you again uh, out here on Facebook land. All right? Pop over to the site and say hi. Bye for now.